we've been demonetized. My YouTube channel, Larry Elder Highlights, has been demonetized. They never tell you why. If you ever read the trial by, by, uh, by Kafka, that's what it's like. You have no idea why, where, when, how, what you did wrong, but all of a sudden you're demonetized. Can't make any money. So I want you to know that you can go to epictv.com slash Larry Elder to watch the shows that you can't watch on YouTube. Also, click on the description below and make a contribution. If you want to continue watching these shows uh, without regard to whether or not YouTube might ban them, might restrict them, might bottle cap them, uh, might restrict their availability, donate, click on the, on the link below, and send a donation. And you'll be sure to keep getting these shows. Also, click on the description below and make sure you're on our mailing list so that you always are aware of the YouTube videos that we put up. Well, the death of Queen Elizabeth II has caused a lot of reactions, not least of which has been a renewed call for reparations, because after all, the British monarchy uh, was a dynasty. Uh, there was an expression called the sun never set on the British Empire. And some people like the man that Donald Trump called the dumbest man in, the te in television, Don Lamont of CNN, who still has a job for reasons that escape me, was interviewing one of these royal commentators and suggested reparations and got a bit of a beat down. Watch this. Well, this is coming when, you know, there's all of this wealth and you hear about it comes as England is facing rising costs of living, a living crisis, austerity budget cuts and so on. And then you have the, those who are asking uh, for reparations for colonialism. And they're wondering, you know, $100 billion, $24 billion here and there, $500 million there. Some people want to be paid back and, uh, and members of the public are wondering, why are we suffering when you are... You know, you have all of this vast wealth. Those are legitimate concerns. Well, I think you're right about reparations in terms of if people want it, though, what they need to do is you always need to go back to the beginning of a supply chain. Where was the beginning of the supply chain? You hear this? Where was the beginning of the supply chain? Now, we've done a video here for Epic Time. We're going to replay it for you in just a second. We talked about the issue. Where was the beginning of the supply chain, as she put it? Because slavery, the African slave trade, transatlantic done by the Europeans, and the Arab slave trade done by the Muslim Arabs could not have taken place without the complicity, cooperation of African chiefs who sold them en masse to European slavers and to Arab slavers. And Mr. Lamont seems to be clueless about that. Nor did he know, apparently, that Britain outlawed slavery some 20 years before we did without the loss of 600,000 lives, both in the North and the South. That was in Africa. And when the, across the entire world, when the slavery was taking place, which was the first nation in the world that abolished sla uh, slavery? The first nation in the world to abolish it. It was started by William Wilberforce, was the British. In, in Great Britain, they abolished slavery. 2,000 naval men died on the high seas trying to stop slavery. Why? Because the African kings were rounding up their own people. They had them on cages waiting in the beaches. No one was running into Africa to get them. And I think you're totally right. If reparations need to be paid, we need to go right back to the beginning of that supply chain and say, who was rounding up their own people and having them handcuffed in cages? Absolutely. That's where they should start. And maybe, I don't know, the descendants of those families where they died at the, in the high seas trying to stop the slavery, that those families should receive something too, I think, at the same time. It's an interesting discussion, Hillary. <laughs> you see the expression? Uh, uh, that's called getting hit in the head with a two by four, the dumbest man on television. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. We'll continue to, to discuss in the future. <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting discussion. To... What about that, Don Lamont? Most, by the way, African slaves remained in Africa and serve as slaves. Yeah, that's an interesting discussion. And we talked about this. We did a video, as I mentioned, for Epic Times, and here it is. I want to ask you something. You know what this is, don't you? It's a My Pillow. And you know what you can do? 
you can go to mypillow.com and use promo code elder and there are over 100 products i kid you not or make it even easier call the number on your screen make sure you use promo code elder and it's not just pillows look how, look how soft this guy is it's not just pillows they've got towels and not only are the towels great looking and not only do they come in different colors but they actually work they are absorbent how often do you go to the towel store and you see towels that look good they're fluffy you take them home and they don't they don't absorb the water well my pillow found that out scoured the country and found a company with proprietary technology to make towels that actually work also there's the my pillow slippers very soft very comfortable not quite like a foot massage but close to it and then there're the, the my pillow towels giza dream bed sheets don't forget those finest cotton in the world i sleep on one every single night so my pillows my slippers my towels there's also the mattress topper and the towels come in a bunch of different sizes and please don't forget the sheets use promo code elder mypillow.com promo code elder or call the number on your screen you know, one of the reasons I believe that the reparations movement has gained steam is because so many people believe that Africans were, quote unquote, kidnapped out of Africa. Now, recall when Ben Carson became the HUD secretary and said this about slaves versus immigrants. Land of dreams and opportunity. There were other immigrants who came here in the bottom of slave ships, worked even longer, even harder for less. Now, then President Obama said almost exactly the same thing. Life in America was not always easy. It wasn't always easy for new immigrants. Certainly, it wasn't easy for those of African heritage who had not come here voluntarily and yet in their own way were immigrants themselves. Now, Carson got hammered. He's insensitive, doesn't understand the difference between a slave and an immigrant. And of course, the kidnap thing in particular. Now, Obama didn't get hammered because Obama's a Democrat. You know how that rolls. But as to Carson and the kidnapped angle, here's what one critic said. Quote, immigrants booked passage and came to these shores in steerage, enduring heat, stench, and cramped conditions in hopes of better lives in America. Slaves were kidnapped and came to these shores shackled, lying cheek to cheek in their own body waste, end of quote. Kidnapped? And writing for the 1619 New York Times project, Nicole Hannah-Jones said the same thing. Quote, in August 1619, just 12 years after the English settled Jamestown, Virginia, one year before the Puritans landed at Plymouth Rock and some 157 years, before the English colonists even decided they wanted to form their own country, the Jamestown colonists bought 20 to 30 enslaved Africans from English pirates. The pirates had stolen them from a Portuguese slave ship that had forcibly taken them from what is now the country of Angola. So far, so accurate. But these men and women who came ashore on that August day were the beginning of American slavery. They were among the 12.5 million Africans who would be kidnapped from their homes and brought in chains across the Atlantic Ocean. 12.5 million Africans kidnapped? You see, this kidnap narrative was made popular by the 1970s miniseries Roots, in which the protagonist, Kunta Kinte, was kidnapped by a raid led by a white man. The inconvenient truth is that most black slaves taken out of Africa were captured in war and were sold to European and Arab slavers by African chieftains, or they were captured in raids conducted by black profit seekers and then sold to European and Arab slavers. This is what a Nigerian novelist wrote about her father telling her a story about her great-grandfather. 
Here's what she said, quote, records from the transatlantic slave trade database directed by historian David Eltis at Emory University showed that the majority of captives brought to the U.S. came from Senegal, Gambia, Congo, and eastern Nigeria. Europeans oversaw this brutal traffic in human cargo, but they had many local collaborators. The organization of the slave trade was structured to have the Europeans stay along the coastlines, relying on African middlemen and merchants to bring slaves to them, said Toyin Falola, a Nigerian professor of African studies at the University of Texas at Austin. The Europeans couldn't have gone into the interior to get the slaves themselves. The anguished debate over slavery in the U.S. is often silent on the role that Africans played. That silence is echoed in many African countries where there is hardly any national discussion or acknowledgement of this issue, end of quote. And this is from PRI, Public Radio International. There is a willful amnesia about the roles that we played in the slave trade, said Nat Amarte Filio, a local historian who's also a former mayor of Accra, Ghana's capital. The Europeans weren't going out and capturing Africans. They couldn't. They got sick and died from illnesses like malaria. Some African ethnic groups went into business warring with other groups so they could capture prisoners they sold as slaves to the Europeans. Amarta Filio says they were organized and intentional about it. To pursue slavery successfully, you need a highly organized group because somebody has to go out there, somebody has to locate the victims, somebody has to lead an army there, somebody has to capture them, transport them to the selling centers all the time, keeping an eye on them to make sure they don't revolt, and then sell them and move on, end of quote. This same Nigerian writer also wrote this for the BBC. Quote, my great-grandfather, forgive me for not trying to pronounce his name, was what I prefer to call a businessman. From the Igbo ethnic group of southeastern Nigeria, he dealt in a number of goods, including tobacco and palm produce. He also sold human beings. He had agents who captured slaves from different places and brought them to him, my father told me. But get this, after this story, her father believes that his grandfather, her great-grandfather, ought not be judged by the standards of today because back in that time, slavery was commonplace all around the world and nobody had any moral objection to it, not really, and Africans didn't think of themselves as one common people. They thought of themselves as separate people, as separate nations. Still, my father does not believe that the descendants of those who took part in the slave trade should now pay for those wrongs. As he points out, buying and selling human beings had been part of many African cultures as a form of serfdom long before the first white people landed on our shores, end of quote. And she concedes that judging the past from the prism of today is problematic at best. It would be unfair to judge a 19th century man by 21st century principles. Assessing the people of Africa's past by today's standards would compel us to cast the majority of our heroes as villains, denying us the right to fully celebrate anyone who was not influenced by Western ideology. Igbo slave traders, like my great-grandfather, did not suffer any crisis of social acceptance or legality. They did not need any religious or scientific justification for their actions. They were simply living the life into which they were raised. That was all they knew, end of quote. So this African writer, whose great-grandfather bought and sold slaves, says, do not judge us by the prism of today's standards, but we're supposed to judge white people who did bad things in the past by the prisons of today's standards and extract money from people who were never slave owners and give it to people who were never slaves? As much as slavery is repudiated around the world today, prior to the 18th century, I know of no serious effort to abolish the institution anywhere. 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 Not in Africa, not in, not oh, in the Arabian Not world. in Africa in the 21st century. Even in the antebellum South, most whites did not have slaves. The cost of one male adult slave 
was more than the average white person earned all year. So they weren't all living in terror with, the, with, with their plantations and all the rest right. of it. And what we're looking at is if slavery is something that happened to one race of people in one country, when in fact the, 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 the spread of it was around the world. In, in 1776, which is when Adam Smith published The Wealth of Nation, as mm -hmm. well as when the United States got started, he said that Western Europe is the only place in the world where there is no slavery. And even, in the, Western, even the Western Europeans had vast numbers of slaves in the Western in, Hemisphere, yes. but not in Western Europe itself. And so if you're going to have reparations for slavery, it's going to be the greatest transfer of wealth back and forth uh, and, between, and, 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 and cross hauling, as they say in, in the railroads, because the, the number of, of whites, for example, who were enslaved in uh, North Africa by the Barbary pirates exceeded the number of Africans enslaved in the United States and in the American colonies before that put together. I know, but nobody is going to North Africa to ask for reparations because nobody is going to be fool enough to give it to them. Uh, here we have, we have intellectuals who can, who can imagine a different history from the rest of the world, even though it's so similar to the rest of the world. Back to the Nigerian writer. Her father told her, quote, if anyone asks me for reparations, I will tell them to follow me to my backyard so that I can pluck some money from the tree there and give it to them, end of quote. So no reparations, says this writer from Africa for the involvement in the slave trade by Africans, but there ought to be reparations from Americans for being involved in the slave trade here. Can you say double standard? <clears throat> I'm looking forward to getting my invitation on the Don Lamont show. Hope you enjoyed that video. The full show is available to watch right now on Epoch TV. Just click the link in the description below to learn more because we've got a country to save.